Hi guys, how's it going? So today I wanted to talk about pacifism because this is something that I've avoided using in the past, but actually there's some really interesting combinations that you can do with pacifists. I'm going to go over basically what pacifism does. So you've got two different forms of it, which are obviously regular pacifism and fanatical pacifism. Normal pacifism stops you being able to declare war for aggressive reasons, basically, but what you in, can instead do is you can actually declare war to impose your ideology on your enemy. So the idea is that you go to war and if you win the war, then your former an enemy can become an ally. So, you know, this is a really good way of actually building up your almost like um, a sort of federation of planets, you know, like this kind of reminds me of Star Trek in a sense, like you can kind of convert people to your way of thinking and they'll be friends with you. And then basically, if you want to sort of dominate them and then later integrate them into your economy, pacifist is actually quite good. One of the other things is if you take like half the enemy empire, right? then with pacifism, if you use the um, pacifist war doctrine, basically the um, empire will be split in half between the um, former empire and the new empire, which will be friendly to you, basically, with the same ethics and everything. So this is actually a very powerful mechanic, which you can kind of use um, to kind of reshape the galaxy, to kind of be your friend. And you, like I say, you can form um, like really good federations and stuff with it too. And of course it gives you the lovely plus five stability and plus 10 administrative cap, which gives you a big advantage or maybe a small advantage in science in the early game. Fanatical pacifist is a completely different kind of animal. Instead of, well, you can still kind of declare war if you're a regular pacifist, but if you're a fanatical pacifist, you cannot declare war pretty much for any reason. So, it, it does completely change um, the game mechanics. Um, I mean, obviously you can still um, fight in defensive wars and things, um, but <clears throat> again, one of the um, things that you can do here is, okay, so you've got your plus 20 admin administrative capacity, right? That'll give you a boost to science. So if you um, tech very quickly, then you can actually kind of out, out compete the enemy economically. So um, you can do some interesting things with this still. Spoilers, okay, there's spoilers here. One of one of the ways that you can actually win with um, fanatical pacifist, and I don't know if I think this is true with regular pacifist too, is you can actually build a super weapon, right? Which may be surprising. Um, and then when you go to war with an enemy, um, what you actually do is you can um, encapsulate the whole planet in a force field and this is instead of um, like mass destruction basically so but it has the same kind of effect in the game so yeah you encapsulate an enemy planet that planet is basically taken out of the game all the population are basically trapped on the planet and they can't leave right so it's kind of a pacifist way of destroying your enemy even though all the population is kind of in theory still alive even though they've been taken out of the game so <clears throat> that's a very interesting mechanic I kind of found. Um, again, I played a whole game as um, Fanatical Pacifist and I didn't do too badly, actually. I um, think I formed um, a, like a few federations and things. One thing you may want to try is if you choose Pacifist and Authoritarian, Xenophobe, okay. Um, Xenophobe will kind of unlock things like slavery options so you can enslave aliens. Um, authoritarian, I think, unlocks nihilistic acquisition, right? Which is um, an ascension perk, which basically allows you, when you declare war, you can send ships into an enemy area and you can abduct like nearly all of their population off the planet. So even, even as a pacifist, you can basically make slaves out of their entire population. And um, obviously here you can um, kind of keep the slaves on on a permanent basis or you can kind of um, work them to death, basically, um, whatever you prefer. But um, yeah, this is actually a really good method for, um, you know, building up um, a, a sort of, you know, mega planets that produce huge amounts of um, goods and services and things. Um, there's also an option I think it's called domestic servitude, right? Where um, the enemies will actually work as um, servants, basically, and they will increase the amenities on the planet by 20%. 
it, it only goes up to 20%, but that gives you about a 20% happiness bonus on the planet. So that can be really quite effective, and I think even the saves benefit from a 20% bonus. Yeah, there's some um, really interesting choices that you can kind of think about, but um, yeah, I hope that gives you a bit of a view on pacifism. <clears throat> Okay guys, so um, here's an example of a pacifist empire that I built earlier. So as you can see, it's um, pretty massive. Um, I think I started off as fanatical pacifist, but um, I kind of found it way too restrictive basically. So I ended up um, moving more towards the um, fan fanatic xenophile basically, so um, kind of re-orientated um, the empire. So now I'm just mildly pacifist, okay? and more sort of fanatic xenophile. So, okay, you might want to know what um, a shrouded planet does, <clears throat> which is perfectly reasonable to ask. So let's have a look here. So um, here's one I shrouded earlier. As you can see, you actually get 10 society research points, which is kind of cool. Um, so, I mean, I kind of gather everyone's still alive on the planet. So now what you do is just research them. So you can also shroud these stations, right? But what you need to do, okay, and this is a good tip, is instead of clicking on the actual structure itself, click on um, the name tag, right? So you would click on the name tag, right click and select shroud or whatever, and that would actually shroud it. Whereas if you just click on the um, structure itself, it won't do anything. I think that's one of the things that's broken in the game. So population wise in this particular game, I've got huge quantities of population from everywhere. Some of these guys were brought as slaves, I think. A lot were kind of gained through conquest, which might be surprising considering you um, you think I'm a pacifist, but um, yeah, you can still manage. You can still do quite a lot of, um, you know, different kinds of going to war. And hey guys, just wanted to give you a massive thank you for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe. Um, give this a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. It's up to you entirely. But uh, yeah, please uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. And thank you very much for watching.